Wednesday. It's Wacky Wednesday going a bumper. Unfiltered. The real deal. No pre planning. No cheap madeiras. Straight up from the bill. Wacky Wednesday. Beat Town's very own. It's Wacky Wednesday going a bumper. Here's your host, Bumper Gomez. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to this uh, episode of uh, Wacky Wednesday. Um, I'm dressed up today, uh, not in my usual uh, attire that I switched to, but uh, it is 16 de septiembre, and uh, you know... Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. When, right, I, when, you. when I called... Uh, I'm going to put it on right now. Hey, Marlon, if you're listening on the outside, I can hear you and I can see you. I'll put you in in a minute. Uh, that's my guest, Marlon. Um, can you hear her? But uh, th this is Jesse Seis of September, man. Uh, it's usually a big yeah. festival in my hometown in Beeville. Uh, I think this year it was canceled. So on the whole Jesse Seis uh, thing, it was really weird that we... We bought this subject up. Um, I, I'm being quite honest right. with you. Okay. I did not know. I did not know that um, what I was going to talk about today was going to fall on the SEC since September. It just kind of, kind of worked out that way. I'm, I'm being honest with you. But yeah, I put out the old Gomez Sarape hat. Uh, thanks to my mm -hmm. buddy uh, Joe the Barber uh, for my for my T-shirt. Oh, the screen Barrio. Um, so, again, uh, <clears throat> if uh, Marlon, I can see you and I can hear you, so you're good. I just haven't bought y'all on yet. <laughs> uh, I can hear you. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> this week, man, is gonna be. T this week's gonna be. No, no, no. I need an introduction. From Florence, we all. Okay, they can't hear you. They can't hear you yet, Marlon. But as soon as I get you on, I'll I'll do that for you. I'll bring you in like that. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, we um, how, how do I say it? Uh, I don't practice these. I don't I don't do anything. So uh, what you see is what you get. It's live, man. Uh, Marlon, uh, my guest tonight, he has been uh, a friend of mine for, man, I, I'm going to guess, and I'm going to say around four years or so, if not more, uh, right around that time. Um, I met Marlon uh, working out, working out, and then we just kind of hit it off, and, uh, you know, we, we started... Uh, <clears throat> started talking and stuff and uh he's just a, a unique individual that you guys are going to get to know tonight uh but bring you up today with wacky wednesday man um thank you guys for tuning in it's going to be another great show uh, i like to bring up subjects that people don't like to talk about and and not even subjects that people don't like to talk about i like to tell people stories that that sounds better i like to tell people stories because you know, you could get something from it. You know what I mean? Like I always say, you could be going through something. You hear somebody else's uh, take on it. And, you know, that that would be, uh, you know, for you hearing that could could help you out. Um, and and tonight's going to be no, tonight's going to be no different. Uh, uh, Marlon, my buddy, he's, he's a man of God. Uh, his, his journey and his story is going to be amazing. Um I, I had uh, just to bring you up to date my week since last Wednesday we've been we've been really really busy. I told you guys last week we did a moment of silence for Mr. Uh, Jay Kimbrough, a good friend of mine growing up. His dad he's a, he's a he's a um, a Marine uh, who served in Vietnam and he he continued to serve. He was a great servant to the state of Texas, to many counties here in Texas. He was a county judge where I was from. Uh, worked for for Governor Perry. He worked for George Bush. Uh, both Bushes he worked for. Uh, he just just a great man, and uh, I had the honor of, of being a pallbearer um, for his uh, funeral yesterday. That was up in in Dallas uh, at the Veterans uh, uh, Cemetery. There, if you guys have never been by the Veterans Cemetery, the Dallas Fort Worth Veterans Cemetery, 
Let me tell you what a beautiful place. It stands right next to the Dallas Baptist University. And I mean, those hills are beautiful. The hills, the greenery, everything, the, the whole service was awesome. So uh, Melissa J, uh, I'm sorry, Melissa Bryan, if you're listening, um, uh, Again, my my deepest condolences, and it was it was a great, uh, an absolute honor to be a pallbearer for your for your father. Um, may he rest in peace. And uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what what I've been doing. And then uh, we got back, and I said, "Man, I got to get ready for for Wacky Wednesday." So without uh without further ado, I'm gonna try to uh, let me fix my split screen real quick because um, now that I can fix it. Hold on. Hey, Marlon, turn your camera sideways. You got it, Doug. What about now? No, now you're sideways. <laughs> Go back. Now you're now you're sideways. It's cool. Turn it the other way. That that'll work. Uh, turn, yeah, like that, like that, like that, like that. Uh, right there, it's perfect, right there's good, that'll work. Ahorita viene no, she's my engineer. Yeah, you know, so, so now we're live, man, we're live, uh, we have my buddy Marlon, uh, he, he is on, uh, Marlon, you, you, you've been my friend, like I was saying, for over four years, dude, I mean, we're literally from two different backgrounds, and I think we just hit it off well, man, what do you, what do you say to that, what do you think about that? Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it's like, like four or five years, right? Something and, like uh, that. It's been close to that. Yeah, yeah. No, when I saw that crazy guy yelling at me, like, come on, we're we working out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, who? I was like, who is this dude? You know, let me go check it out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, thanks to my wife. Thanks to my wife for helping me figure out the split screen. Uh, I just want to, uh, Marlon, you heard kind of the intro, man, how I've kind of been going with it. And, and we, we talked online with kind of what we, what, the way, what we want to talk about. Uh, and I really just want people tonight to sit back, relax. Get away from TV. Don't say get away from social media because that's what I'm on. But get away from TV, man. Get away from just just sit down and listen, man. Listen because uh, I'm I'm gonna point it. I'm gonna poke at some things, uh, you know, and, and not not make Marlon uncomfortable at all because you know we've we've always we've talked about these things. And I just want the viewer to get like if you were sitting at the table with us having a drink, you know, drinking some water, whatever it may be. I just want you to get a glimpse. Uh, because you know what? You turn on Fox, you turn on CNN, you turn on MSNBC, you hear the word immigration, you hear the word the American dream, you hear um, what's the uh, <clears throat> kids in cages, you hear all these different things on immigration and it's, it's always either so negative, you, you never really hear anything positive. Um, and tonight I really want to paint a story, not, not a story, I, I, I want you to hear yeah, a story. I want you to hear a real, true story of what it takes, what these people endure for what most of us take for granted. That's the truth, you know. And if you're if you're just if you're just tuning in um, and and you know uh, coming on, you know the the comments. You, you can you can ask him whatever you want. You know what I mean. The the the, the comments I can see him. We, we can read them to him. Uh, I'm sure his wife's next to him, probably watching the live as well. Uh, and and you guys can come on there and and ask. You know what? If he wants to answer, he'll answer. Um, but I I just want you to to sit back and realize how hard it is for somebody to come to a an unknown place. Um, I don't want to hear like, oh, it's it's you're breaking the law. Okay, we get it. We, we that, that, that's, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call that right now. When you cross the border illegally, you're breaking the law. 
You can write it a million times in the comments. I'll see it. Gotcha. I'm rolling with it. Whatever. But I'm here to tell you, and, and, I, and I just want you to uh, just follow along, man. Just follow along and, and listen to, uh, to Marlon's story. So, Marlon, um, I, I met you a few years ago, and I knew right away you were a family man, bro. Like, I mean, just, just talking to you, uh, we, we, did, we dug the same kind of music. Um, but, it, it, dude, usually, like, in the first five minutes, I can tell somebody if they're not Mexicano. Like, usually before that, like, in the first maybe one minute, two minutes, I'm like, or as soon as they talk Spanish, they're like, oh, no. He's not, but I was either singing something and you, you finished the lyrics for me like you always do, you know, or like working out and, and I start singing a song and you, and you, don't make me sing that song, you know, so, um, Marlon, uh, where did you grow up at, man? Uh, I'm from Nicaragua. You know, uh, Nicaragua is a Central America. A lot of people, they don't know that the, the team is Mexico. And uh, it's not, you know, it's a Central America. So it's uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Guatemala, El Salvador, Panama. So it, it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah, right there, I can see my country, bro. When I see that country, I'm all like, <laughs> my, my blood start pumping, you know. <laughs> I got you, I got uh, you. It's a, it's a little country, bro. I think there's only like seven million people. But so, as you, as you, so you're from Nicaragua. I just so people say, you know, it's not Mexico. So like you say, and you know, you have all those countries in between. So that that's a lot of borders to cross, bro. I cross uh, four borders. Four. Yeah. So yeah, I had to cross uh, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. And Mexico, and then United States. So it's a long, long drive. <laughs> a long drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Marlon, you grew up in Nicaragua. Um, did you come from a from a wealthy family, or or, or or you know what what kind of family did you grow up in there in, in Nicaragua? No, bro. Like we like. Uh, I come from like a very humble family. Poor. You know, we were poor, like my house, I, uh, I remember over there it was, you know, we closed it with cardboard and, pre, uh, you know, those la the laminate, the thing that you, you can find, so wood, and so that was my house over there. And I got, we are, we have, you know, over there, we have big families, so uh, one little room, we sleep all the same bed, you know, like all, all the same room. So... That's my background, but my dad, my dad, he's a humble guy. Uh, we are farmers, so for us, you know, going outside, play outside, that was my, you know, when that I was, was little. Fun. That was Oh, bro, that was like, we don't even know we were poor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's what makes it so that. great. You, that, you yeah, when, when, don't even when know hear your stories, bro, that's what makes it so freaking great, is that... Yeah, we don't even know for because uh, let me tell you something, right? Um, a lot of people, or, or the, the way I see it now, be poor in here in the United States is way, way different to be poor in other countries like, you know, Nicaragua. It's different, you know? Because I remember I was little, I was poor, but I used to be happy. You know, I used to go play outside. My mom used to give me the tortilla and put a, a mantequilla on top with all. And uh, you go outside and play. That's it. You forgot you hungry, bro. You know, like so that was. Uh, so, hey, Marlon, we we I'm gonna have to stop you every so often, Marlon, when you're using the the mantequilla. We, we got people on here that don't speak no Spanish, so what he's, what he's talking about is a little bit of butter on uh, Ooh, on, his, yeah. on his on his tortilla. That's what the mantequilla is for my viewers yeah, who don't don't, don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> um, Marlon, also. Uh, you know, like you said, man, you said something that really stuck out to me. You you were so poor that you didn't even, you guys didn't even know you were poor. You you, you found what you, you were happy, you were content with what you have. And, you know, that, that says really how humble uh, you you were. That's why when I when I was talking to Weecha, like, man, you know what? Marlon's story, because uh, I heard you and Gigi the other night on Gigi's show. Uh, 
a sister, a soul sister talk. Uh, if y'all you, you don't watch, uh, follow my my. Uh, I call her Gigi, but I think she's she's Crystal on on Facebook. Uh, she has a show on Mondays. That, that it's it's awesome. And uh, her and her and her husband. She had her husband as a guest, and they they were talking, and it it my light bulb turned on, and I'm like, man, you know what? Marlon has a freaking amazing story because, you know, when we think today's this is we think Mexicano. You know, you you cross the Rio Grande and then the United States, bro. You just told me you crossed four borders, four. Yeah. That, can can, can yep. we can we go back oh, or before we get there? Like before we go to that, uh, how old were you when you decided to leave Nicaragua? Well, like when I because in my country, when you like seven or eight, as soon as you start working, you follow you that right everywhere. So the first thing the teacher is how to work with your hands, you know? So that's one thing that my dad always like, okay, you know, it's okay to be poor, but always be humble. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to embarrass you to say like, oh, you steal from me. Or you got this from me. Or I give you this, I, I give this to you. So my dad, he's very pie guy. Like he's very like pie for, you know, the first thing they teach us, it was, Always walk with your chest, you know, up front, right? Don't be embarrassed. Don't be like, be, you know, but at the same time, you have to be humble. And, uh, so when I was like, I was, I was like eight, I started working with my dad, you know, I used to go work every day outside. And, um, uh, but inside my mind always had that thing that like, I know I can do better, you know? I don't know why. For some reason, when I was little, I I had that vision, you know. I always had that like uh, that vision that I want to do something with my life. I want to be better. Um, so when I was probably fourteen or fifteen, I went. Uh, I had to immigrate to Honduras, you know. So I went to Honduras and I started working over there, and I started making a little more money. And then. Um, when I was in Honduras working, um, I met a guy, one of my friends. Um, he's like, hey, bro, you know, like, I just came back from the United States. And, uh, man, it's so, like, different over there. And that stick on my mind. Of, man, like, if I can, if I can know how to get there, right? Because back then, you don't know nothing. So, it's like, so I was, I think I was 17. Kitty guy, bro. I don't know what happened to me now. Uh, skinny guy with the uh, afro, you know, with, because I made it go my head with afro. And uh, so I decided to uh, to try. So back then I quit my job and I got a little bit of money. And uh, so we decided with me and another guy. Well, one of my friends, we decided to, oh, you know, let's go try it. So we crossed Guatemala, Honduras, Salvador, Mexico. So let me but stop you real quick Mex before you before you go. Let me stop you because you're going quick, and and I I really wanna I want the viewers to grasp because like when you say you're crossing, it just sounds so easy. Like oh, I just left, I left Nicaragua. I went and worked in Honduras. I got my 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 visa to work there, and then. I, you know, just decided to make a trip to, to America. It's not that easy. So yeah. I, if you can, like, so when, when your friend decided how you were, what, 17, you said? Yeah, I was 17. 17 years old and you probably had maybe, I mean, I, I, I don't know. How much American money do you think that you had in your pocket to your name? Back then, I like American, about three four hundred dollars that was a lot and back then, you know, like that was like I was rich. <laughs> so, so what do you do, Marlon? Like, like, okay, you're working in Honduras, and and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask these because again, I I really want to paint a very vivid picture for the viewers who are watching. Who you know, you might have watched some shows, you might have, you know what I mean. But this guy's real. He's he's lived it. He's done it. And and I just I really want you guys to get a picture of it. I mean, what? what what do you do? What's the what, like? So your friend says, "Hey, let's do it." You say, "Let's go." You know, I got some money. Let's take off and do it. What, what do you do? What's the first thing you do as a seventeen-year-old kid? 
Okay, so we when we got to the border between Guatemala and Mexico, that's when everything starts, you know? And there is, everything is like changed. So, man, I was like, I was scared, I was nervous, but I was praying, man. I always pray to God, They're like, man, I was like, please, Jesus, if I make it, you know, I just want to help my family. I just want to provide for my family. So, you got to the border, right? To the river between uh, Guatemala and Mexico, and you, there's a lot of guys in there. They're like, "Oh, I hope you to, to cross. You know, give me like twenty bucks or like ten bucks. I hope you to cross." So we wait all day, and we decided to do it uh, during the night. You know, to cross. So when we cross to Mexico, it is. Like I said, everything changed because there's a lot of police, there's a lot, a lot of immigration, and there's a lot of bad people too, you know? Like, I remember, like, the soon we crossed, I got a couple of, like, young guys, man, like, they look like Juanito, super small, and they got me with a big old machete, bro, you know? And they're like, hey, give me your money. So they take all our money back then, right, right, really quick. So... And uh, we like, and uh, one of them I remember, bro. I, I still remember, but this day, like if it was yesterday, one of them he punched me in my eyes, bro. Like, you know, and I was like, there's nothing you can do because they have you, like, you know, with your hand, like, and your back. And, but I was always, like, inside my mind, I was praying, you know, Jesus, if I survive this, you know, I was gonna, I promise I'm gonna do something with my life. And, uh, so we, so we went across Mexico, right? All that happened. Back then, it was in the, and actually it was in the 2000. Uh, you, back then, you had to cross, you had to take the train, you know? But when you say take the, the train, because I've seen the videos. That, now, if, to the viewers, like, do you mean a train, like you went and bought a ticket and got on a train? Or do you mean the train that uh, you see in the movies? Where you see the people like wherever they can get on, you, they get on and they it's, you see, they know it's going north. You see the trend, the one that you can see right here, the the one that's for like, you know, those yeah, for commercial things, stuff, like yeah. That. So those, and they don't stop. So you have to you have to run, you have to run, but and uh, and, and you know grab it, whatever you can, you know, you have to grab it. So the soon you get in the train, you have to get your space and just like because when you get in the train, sometimes it doesn't stop for like three or four days. So you you stuck in there, you know. All well, once the, the train's the moving, week. like you, you you it ain't gonna stop. You you're stuck on it. But I mean, but it's yeah. gotta be a good feeling knowing that you're that no matter what, you're heading north and you're getting closer to where where you want to be. Yeah. Uh, morning, so but you got that excited. You, it's. I know for some viewers it's kind of hard to understand, but you know, in Mexico, I would think that you would stand out. They know. They know you're not Mexicano. They know. You know, no, no, what I mean? no, no. That, that, that you're coming through. And, and... Go ahead. Yeah, right away. Then they know I'm not from Mexico because my accent, um, the way I look, my hair. You know, everything is like. Uh, and it was hard, man. Like, like I said, cross Mexico, it was harder than get here, you know, to be honest. But what about food, Marlon? Like, what about, I mean, you just told me the guy robbed you for the 300 bucks you had for the whole trip to go through a whole country. So, so when, when we got the train, we stayed there on top for like three days. The soon the train stopped in the little town, we used to get up and go ask people to knock the door, hey, you know, like, can I have a taco or whatever you have or can I have some water? And uh, people give you, like, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of good people in Mexico, too. Don't get me wrong. Like, you have both. You know, you have bad people and you have good people. So it's a lot of people that, like, they're willing to give you, you know, food, water. And, and uh, that was a blessing, man, because we don't have nothing. When we, we don't take shower for three days. 
you use the bathroom on top of the train, you know, like you had to do everything in there. Raining, it was cold, it was like. It, it, Marlon, and, and to think about, you know, or to my viewers, think about that, man. If you're a man, think about how much pride you have to put to the side to go knock on a, to go knock on a door of somebody that you absolutely do not know and just say, man, can I get a drink of water? Can I just get something to eat? You know, those are the little things that we just kind of overlook. You know what I mean? Those are the things that I kind of want to bring to the table um, that I want people to understand that, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it, 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 it it's breaking the law. But dude, they're, they're, the fact of the matter is they're trying to better themselves and they're trying to be, you know, better their family. And people come on here and they're going to tell me, hey, there's the right way of doing things. You know, the right way of doing things takes years. Yeah. Not months, not weeks. It takes years. So if your family can't eat, if your family is not able to survive where they're at being a man you're going to do what you got to do exactly and, and and Marlon I'm going to I'm going to be doing this throughout your journey man because I really want I want I really want to push people to think outside of what what's just what what we automatically think like I really want you to think outside the box tonight um so there you are Marlon you're knocking on people's doors in Mexico uh with an afro you know, yeah, and 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 a, and a guy knocking on my door saying, "Hey, man, un taquito de frijoles or whatever." I'm I'm pretty sure deep down in Mexico, that's that's probably that's probably what the majority of, especially in poor things. I mean, beans go a long way, and and that's a common thing. I I have seen uh, little movie trailers and stuff where they they take uh, little bags of food, and as the train's going, they throw the they throw the food, and whoever gets yeah. it, you get lucky to. Get lucky to eat, man. So, yeah, Marlon, that's good for you, you like, did, did somebody feed you? Did somebody? I mean, you. Uh, I mean, how many yeah, times no, do you no, think you like, stopped? But I'm like three, four times because the train and go like, let's say we got the train in like Tapachula, Mexico, right? It went all the way to uh, Aguascalientes, so it stopped in there. So as soon as the stop, we used to go, like I said, and I go and ask for water, ask for food. And uh, it was a lot of good people. They give you food, they give you water. Even uh, it was an old lady that I remember that was the first time I tried the, the chorizo con huevo <laughs> and, and jalapeno, bro. I was, not, I was not used to that type of food, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, But it was, it was, you know, it was you, so good. It was like. You, you were hooked. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was hungry, bro. Imagine not eating for three days, you know. So I was, I was hungry. I was like, and then um, uh, we used to go sleep underneath the train. And when you sleep, all the guy was watching because it was, uh, you know, uh, you had to watch out for yourself all day. You like, you sleep one night, one night open, the other one is like. No, I, I can imagine. Out. I mean, the, the people that know that you guys have nothing, and if you do have something, you have very bare minimum stuff and, and you know and you're easy to you're you're going to be easily robbed because you're not from there you don't know where to go you don't know who to go to you're doing something you're already in the you're already in the wrong but you know and 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 here these people are just going to try to take advantage of you like i i get that man i mean that's kind of like like really what what I, what i want people to understand you know and and when you get to these towns marlin what goes through your mind as a 17-year-old, bro? I was just trying to survive and get here. My my mind, it was get to the border, you know? That was my, my that was my goal. Like, I was like, okay, you know, like I said, I was praying, and, you know, every night I was praying. And uh, my, my, my goal, it was just to get to the border and cross. And um, I, it took me... 21 or 22 days to cross Mexico. You know? And like I said, it was, 
I had a good day and I had a bad day. It was, I had a good people, you know. Most of the time it was like good people, they give you water, they give you food. But it was still, you know, like, so when I got to the border, when I saw, you know, when you, I got to Loreto, you know, uh, Tamaulipas. So when I got there and, I, and you can see Loreto, Texas, right? Man, my heart was like pumping, man. I was like, that's my goal, you know? That was like, I was, I was all like, you know, my, my shoes are not working anymore. They're not good anymore. My, my pants, they were all ripped. Um, I was smell bad. I, I, I remember, I still remember that smell. You know, I was smelling bad. You know, I don't take it bad. I don't, but, and I was crying and praying. Thank you, Jesus, because always, always, you know, I remember I used to close my eyes, you know, when I was, in the middle of the wood and all that stuff, I was just praying, you know, like, thank you, Jesus, for, I know he was with, with me, you know, that's the only way I survived, so, we crossed, we, the same, we had to wait for a night to cross the river, and we walked all the way to Cotula, we walked for like three nights, straight, all the way to, to Cotula, so let me cut so, you right there. So when you got to you got to Laredo, man, you got me all teary eyed and shit, bro. I'm, I'm just I'm thinking of a 17 year old with their heart pumping, with with the goal in sight. You know, regular Americans. I mean, our heart pumps for different things, but I mean, I, I just I just couldn't imagine that feeling, bro, of three weeks, of th three weeks of hell. Of leaving your mom, your dad, everything you knew, leaving it all behind with no money, with just yeah, oh, the dream, oh, just a dream uh, of getting there. You know what I mean? That that's that that that's freaking nuts, dude. So so when you get to Laredo, you know you you you've been on the train, you whatever three weeks. You know you, you, your 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 shoes are ripped, your, your your jeans are ripped. Now the game changes. I mean the border to between Guatemala and and in, in, in Mexico or Guatemala and Honduras is not the same as as the border between nah. Mexico and Texas. And and, and I would say uh, even, you know, you're saying 2000, so this is before 9-11. Um, I could just imagine what it is now. But uh, you, you get to Laredo, Marlon, and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of you that make it to Laredo uh, together. Yeah. Well, what's your it was, it was, what's your mindset there? Like, well, what what do you what do you what do you do? When we got when we got to the border, so we had to walk uh, almost a full day to uh, from uh, Laredo Tamaulipas to the border, right? And there's like a little desert in there, it's dry. So my partner, my friend, he was already like almost dying. So he passed, you know, like he um, to this mayo, right? He passed out. How do you so, and I was like, I don't want to leave my friend in here. I don't want to let him die in here, you know? So I stayed there until he like came back and he, he said like, I can, I have to go back. So he went and he, he returned himself right by the border already, bro. But he was so tired that like, he said like, I can't make it anymore. So, so. And I was like, no. He stopped. On the Mexico side, you, you hadn't crossed yet over into the United States? So the uh -huh. whole three-week journey, he was willing to give it up, the whole dream, because of where he was at and how hard it was just to get to where he was at. He almost, uh, I almost, I thought he was dead when I, when he went to the ground and, you know, and he, it take almost like three, four hours him to wake up. And I, and it was just me hand, you know, pouring some water and trying to like get him back. And yeah, that night he was like, I said, I can't, I want to go see my family. Yeah, I want to see my family again. Cause he got a wife and he got two kids, you know, and I was young there, I don't have. Marlon, but uh, here's the other question. You're in Laredo. We haven't got to the United States yet. That just happened to your friend. Your friend throws up the flag on you. He says, hey, man, deuces, I'm going back. Now you're on your own. I will who, do you, who do you have? Okay, you crossed all these three borders. 
But who do you, do you know somebody over here waiting for you? At least do you know do you know anybody that's going to be at least here to help you once you do make it here? Yeah, uh my uh, my brother-in-law, he was here in San Antonio. And we barely talked, you know. So uh, but my hope it was just like to get here and like I just want to make it, you know. So he was um he was here in San Antonio working. So it was just him. I don't have I don't have no more family here in San Antonio or in the United States. So when I cross when we crossed the river, we walked for three nights to Cotula. How'd you cross you know the river? Cotula, right? We swim. We swim. And, Winter time uh, or summertime? Winter it was time? in December. December. In December. Yeah. It was cold, bro. It was like, you're freezing. Uh, and, uh, yeah. That's crazy, bro. And, th and then it was, it was rainy. The three nights that we walked to Cotula, it was raining. Three days. And uh, the only way we know that we're going the right way is because we see those, those little lights, you know, uh, you see those big old, uh, I forgot how to say, but you the, see those lights. The 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 ones that like like on oil rigs or like the ones on the electric, the big power outlet, the big electric. Yeah, the, ones? The, 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 the big power so, mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that, we will be like, okay, you know, we have to walk that way. We have to walk that way because if if you walk to the highway, you know, you get, you get caught, and uh, they take you back, they send you back. And uh, so we got to Cotula. And when, that's when, 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 my, you say, uh, when you say we, like, like you left your buddy, bro. You, you you're on your own. Did did you get oh, a coyote? Uh, did you get a coyote? Did you like like th that's what no. that, that's kind of like where the confusion is like not confusion, but that's kind of where I want people to like. You're in Laredo. Your heart's pumping because you know on the other side is your goal. At least, you know, you want to get to San Antonio, but, you know, at least you'll be in the United States if you can get there. What, at 17 years old, you have no money. How do you get somebody to show you where to go? How you, you, you don't have a map. There's no GPS. You don't have a phone. You, you can't just walk to Cotula, Texas. I mean, the, the chances of you making to Cotula in a straight line are impossible. Yeah. So what happened was, um, when you get to the border, to the border, there's a lot of people like me, you know. A lot of people they they already they already come and they already went back. So a lot of people they already know how to get there, you know. So I was there just trying like winging it because I don't have money to pay a, a coyote, you know. So I was just there. So it was an old guy in there, just like, oh, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm trying to make it to San Antonio, Texas. Oh, I got family, and then I going over there too. So I just, you know, stick with him. Like, I was just, oh, I'll follow you, you know, like. So so you, you met a guy that was coming to San Antonio and did did, did he have, did he have a, a coyote? No, he, but he was, he, he lived here in San Antonio before. So he, he knows back. the deal. He know he knows where to yeah. go. And... You know, a, you know. Mm -hmm. so when we got to Cotula, uh, he got some friend that, they, uh, that picked him up on the car. And he gave me a right here to San Antonio. Hey, for, so for any viewers watching, can somebody, can if for, for anybody watching in the comments, I would really like to know this because, you know, being a Marine, we, we hiked, you know, we say we hiked 25 miles, 18 miles. Yeah, we got a little bit of stuff on our pack and we're wearing boots and, you know, going up hills and stuff. But that's a whole, this, this is, this, that, that has nothing on what these, what these people go to. Uh, what what my buddy Marlins uh, went through. So if somebody can just find uh, the mileage from Laredo, Texas to Cotula as the eagle flies, put it on here because I'm sure that's how they they ride. They don't go by highway; they go by as the eagle flies. Uh, my buddy Audi, he he uh, he commented that that they follow the High Line North. That's what the, that's what it's called, the High Line uh, going north, yeah. and that's how you know. Another comment, um, a faithful viewer, Veronica and Ray Riojas, they said, you kept, and this is deep, Martin, 
you, shoot, man, you kept your eye on the cross each and every step. Talk about courage, faith, and resiliency. Yeah. That's a tattoo, bro. Definitely. I used to just close my eyes and just pray by myself, you know? Uh, just pray and ask, ask Jesus for protection because in there you like exposed to anything, anything can happen to you, you know? Yeah. So you and, just, you just close your eyes and, and pray. That's all you can do. And pray. That's so, it. so you, so you get to Cotula, man. And, and I mean, Cotula still a, a good, uh, 68 miles or somebody 68, 73 miles. I put, I, that's still a long way, dude. That's a long way to walk. Yeah. Uh, you know, so what I mean? we got we got we got into inside the car, and the people is like, oh, uh, because there was like four or five people that they, they, they pick them up on the car. So you got people back in the trunk. You have people back, you know, like back there, and you just come like you just get down, you know, so way they don't see you. And when I got here to San Antonio to. Uh, Hold up, rewind, like, rewind, crazy. rewind, rewind, rewind. You, you lost me, man. You got to rewind, man. So you left Cotula. Yeah. When you got to Cotula, you linked up with some, somebody said they'd give you a ride for free? No, no, no. The, the, the old guy was coming with me. Uh -huh. He knows some people that you pay like 500 bucks. They go and pick you up. And there. Okay. Yeah, because when you got to the Cotula, you can, you know, a lot of people, they know how to go and get use the phone. And hey, you know, like I'm here in Cotula, and this is this address. I give you 500 bucks, or they have family member they pay for it first, you know, because they have to pay first. And uh, they go and they pick you up at night, the middle of night. So how did you get the money? Ah, uh, my brother-in-law. The guy you didn't talk to that much. He had it in his heart. No. You, you were that close. You were close to him. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so he, he helped me. What, what kind of vehicle do you do? You still remember what kind of vehicle it was? It was a little Toyota Toyota Corolla. A little, you know the old Toyota Corolla, the little one. The four doors, little four door yeah. Corolla, little round ones. Yeah. Wow, dude. And how many? Do you yeah. remember how many people you try to get in there? You know, it was like four or five people. On the back. And you still have to go to that last checkpoint, right? No, no, no. Because when you pass Cotula, that's why you go around. Because the checkpoint is right before Cotula. Like, you know, 10 miles. Uh -huh. uh, you know, when you pass Cotula. So that's uh -huh. why they go Cotula. Because right before Cotula, right after Cotula is the checkpoint. So you go around. Hold on, Marlon, I got you and you're stuck. Let's see. I'm trying to get you again. Hey, uh, Marlon, real quick, if you can hear me, uh, click the link again and come back on. Yeah, I can hear you. Because uh, your camera's stuck. Like it's... it's. It, <laughs> he's got to call the other. He's got to call his producer. Let me, let me call my producer. Yeah, just... Uh, uh, Hang up where you're at right now and then Wait. come back on. So to my viewers, as, as we're working this out, um, you, you know, uh, I'll come out to you. Yeah, Gigi, I just need you to, I just need you to, to uh, click back on, come back on, like get off and then click the link and come back in again. Um, so again, to my viewers, man, I'm just really trying to paint you a very vivid picture of, of what it's like, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's, uh, this is, this happens every single day, every single day. And excuse me, if you guys see me get a little teary eyed or a little bit of what he called, it, cause I know him, you know, I, I personally, I personally know him and, and it's, it's just, uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy to, to, to know that, you know, what he's been through and we're not even, we're not, we're barely touching the, we're barely touching the uh, thing. Gigi, I can hear you. I can see you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, he he had to go to the restroom. <laughs> oh, we're doing a bathroom. He had to take a bathroom break. That's why he paused. <laughs> no, no, it paused. It, it paused, and then he was like, oh, let me go. Here he comes back. Hold on. Okay. Yo, yo. <laughs> You're back on. We're back on. We're good. We're good. Um, so, Marlon, you, you get in this this Corolla, man, and you're you're gonna you're, you're heading up. Uh, I would assume 35 North, right? <laughs> 35 yes. North so, to San Antonio. So, so where do you go? Me. Do you remember where you went? Yes, you know the parking lot at the South Park Mall. Yeah, so the South Park Bar. Yeah, okay. Oh, my my brother-in-law meet the guy in there, and then he picked me up. He took me to apartment. Uh, I remember he used to live over there by uh, San Pedro, and uh, I think it was Oasis, San Pedro and Oasis, uh-huh. right by the you know the San Francisco State House. No, I don't know where. I, I mean. I know where San Pedro is, but San Pedro is a long, long road. Uh, so, so w- when you when you get to the parking lot of the South Park Mall, your brother-in-law has to go pick you up. Yeah, he meet the guy in there, and he has to pay the guy in there. You in, know, in, cash. In cash, because if not, you stay, you sticking around that dude in some house until they come and pay you, yeah. right? Yeah, they don't let you go if you don't pay. Man, that's that's nuts. Hey, I want to read some some comments. Uh, uh, they said your journey. Your journey reminds me that there are so many good people in the world willing to help a complete stranger. Um, another good friend of mine I grew up with, Marlon. He's been in the oil industry for a long time, and I and I'm sure if you have anybody in the oil that ever worked in the oil rigs or stuff like that, they'll tell you about these. All they see them all the time. So coming right from the from the horse's mouth. Um, my buddy Philip, he said, like, I drilled a lot of wells around those areas. I helped lots of those guys traveling through the night. Gave them water and food. Bumper, it's yeah. almost, it's, and, uh, he's, he's like, Bumper, it's almost every that. single night, two to ten people. Every night, two to ten people. My buddy Philip was helping them. Thanks, Philip. That that says a lot about your character and about who you are, bro. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, just uh, let me... Let me tell you something like like the majority of those people they just want to work, you know, like me. They just want to support the family. They just, just they just want a better life, you know, for me, for my family. Um, that was my mentality, you know. That my my, my mentality was just to get here, work. I don't, I you know me. I never expect anything for free, you know. I like to work, right? I don't I don't ask for anything. I don't. I don't ask, I don't expect the government to help me. I don't expect to nobody. You know, if you give me a job, uh, that that for me that's a blessing. You know, if you give me if you let me work, that's a blessing to me because I don't want they give it they give it to me for free or I don't expect anything to like. Um, I like to earn it with my own hands. You know. That's the way. Um, that's, that, that, that's, that's your, the way that's my... your mentality, and 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 that that that's that's why I wanted to bring you on here, bro. Because that I I know that's the kind of person you are, um, Marlon. So now you're 17 years old, bro. You're in San Antonio, Texas. It's the year 2000. Yeah. Puro Tejano, right? You're, you know, you're in Tejano country. Probably something you never even heard of in your life. Uh, never. You know what I mean, but. <laughs> So you're here, bro. You're living with your with your brother-in-law. Uh, is your sister here too? No, my sister uh, is over there in my country. So he was here working already, and your sister was back at home. Yeah, he was. He was yeah, he was here just working, and um, he used to, you know, spend money every week. So when I got here to San Antonio with him, I don't know that, but they used to live. 10, 12 people in the same apartment. You know? God. It was it was crazy. And probably and like I was a like, one or two wow. bedroom, huh? Yeah, one, one, two bedroom apartment. So if you go at night in this apartment, it was like a cemetery. 
you see a lot of dead body on the floor, bro, just looking, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, oh, man. So you're 17, Marlon, in a new country. Uh, was your brother-in-law really strict about like, hey, cabron, you're here. I paid these 500 bucks. And the first 500 bucks you get, you're going to pay me back. Was, was that the deal? No, he, he didn't say that. He was nice. He was like, he let me do like a hundred bucks, you know, a week or whatever I got paid. So when I got here to San Antonio, um, I started working at uh, the San Francisco State House. I applied for, uh, I was doing a dishwasher, you know, night dishwasher. And then I used to go to the Nostar Mall. I used to map every night. From, not, from 10 to 6 a.m., map all night. I you got that the when whole I start mall. working. The whole mall. Yeah, I know. I, I know the Nostar more like <laughs> like a like a half. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, I'm I, for those of my San Antonio viewers, my South Texas viewers, people from Beaver that come up to San Antonio, and you've been to the mall with the big boots, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about that, man. Think about wh how long it takes you to go from one end of the mall to the other. Imagine mopping that and then all the sides. You know, Marlon, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy, man. So, yeah. so you, 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 you'd, you'd work early evenings washing dishes and then go straight to, to, to mopping floors. And then at 6, you, you'd probably... What, Marlon, maybe for you it was probably good because you probably had the apartment to yourself. Everybody probably had normal day jobs. And you get to go home and sleep while everybody was gone. Yes. Yes. It, it was good for a little bit, but I don't, I was like, so when the, the, the first thing I, I did it was uh, help my family, help my parents. Because that was my goal, right? Remember, you know, that was my goal to get here. My mentality was to like provide for my father, for my mom, my brothers. So let's go back. Let's so, go back to 2000. Let's go, let's go back to... Marlon working at the at the San, at the San Francisco Steakhouse, and 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 you get a check, right? And I, I really want to be yeah. I really want to be, um, really as realistic as possible as we can with the viewers. How much do you think? Do you remember how much one of your checks was that you used to get? Your first check you got from that place? It was between two fifty and three hundred bucks. And out of that money, how much money did you send back to your parents? Uh, like 150, 200. So 75% of your earnings you send right back to your family. Yeah. Because that, that was my, my goal, you know, to help him. Because, like I say, when I was little, I used to see my dad, my dad, my mom, the struggle, you know? And. I, like I say, I always had a vision that I can do better. I always had that inside me that, like, you know, I know God made me smart for some reason. I know I can do better. So even when I was little, I had that mentality inside me. They're like, Marlon, they're asking. Uh, I think I think your wife kind of answered on the bottom, but I, you know, if they're not reading the comments uh, to the viewers who don't read the comments, they're just watching. Um, your English is good, bro, and and people are asking like. Did you learn English in Nicaragua, or did you 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 learn like most people, most most immigrants when they llegan, they get here and they learn like their feet to the fire. They have no choice but to learn English. How, how did you, how did you learn? No, I learned here in San Antonio. So when I got here and I started working, uh, the only thing I used to go order was tacos, tacos, tacos. <laughs> so. I was like, man, I need to learn. And I remember one time, one of my friends that we used to work together, we went to Jack in the Box to order some burger. We, were, we went for burger at Curly Fight. And uh, so I told him to order for me, and he made me feel better in front of people. And he was like, can you talk, right? I'm like, yeah, you order. And I was like, ah, oh, man. So he, he I remember I was, yeah, so I was like, I, I need to learn English. I need to learn English. So I find a little church in Blanco and West Avenue. It's a Catholic church that they used to teach English for free. 
you know. So I used to go for a couple of hours every day to it, it, to learn English. You would go to school for a couple of hours to a free class after yeah. already working what you just told us that you worked? Yeah. That's that's unreal, bro. That's that's unreal, man. Uh, uh, I want to yeah, go, so, uh, go to some of these comments here. Like, uh, uh, they want to know about your English. You just told them, and then totally an oxymoron. But but Marlon, you are humbly audacious. And she's very, uh, the lady is very or 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 the or Ray very inspiring. Um, another question: What was the most help? What was the most helpful with getting you settled anyone that stands out do you, do you remember anyone that uh, besides your brother-in-law that kind of you know you you gravitated to and kind of went to and they they kind of helped you like hey ya estás aquí you know you're here you know this is this is what you're going to do. do do you do you have somebody in mind that that stands out to you that you know helped you like that hell yeah bro uh, i got a guy in this Juan Reyes I hope he can look at this right now. Uh, he's like my second father, man, to me. He's a, he's a Mex he's from Mexico. He's from, uh, Coahuila. So, I don't remember right now how I, how, how, to, how we met. So, he used to paint houses. That's when I started painting. That was, you know. So, I, and I started working with him. And he teach me how to work. He used to take me to his house and treat me like like one of his own family member. His wife used to cook for us lunch, and he he helped me to buy my first little car. And I remember one of those old Chrysler Supreme, those little cars. And he's the one that like teach me how to work in here. You know that different work in here, in San Antonio. But he, like I said, he treated me like his father, like I was his son. You know, and I'm always grateful. We still, you know, we still talk, we still call every week. You know, but he he's the one that was like, I'm going to be grateful, I think, my entire life, you know? Because and he, I still, he's a, he still call me mijo, you know, what mijo means. You yeah, know? Oh, yeah man, I, I mean. You know, when they call you that, it's because it's like, it means something. So... I have to be say I have to say Juan Reyes and his family was my my yeah, man. more like the one that helped me like a lot. Marlon, before I forget, I I kind of miss this, and I I really want people to know the day that you decided to leave to Honduras. Uh, did did you go back to Nicaragua be, before you before you were make the trip up here, or once you left Nicaragua to Honduras, you never went back? No, I used to go. I, I used to go back every December, you know, just mm -hmm. for vacation. Did you Did you back, tell your uh, mom and dad? Did you tell your mom and dad? No. That you were gonna no, make the trip to the United my, States. No. Uh, because my mom, um, she, um, she had like a heart attack before. Not heart attack. How do they call it? one before heart attack? A stroke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was scared. I was scared as I told her that I was gonna trying to make it here to the United States. So I was like, I this, I called her when I was here. She 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 don't believe me when I called her and I was like, Mama here in San Antonio, Texas, and she's like, Where is that? Where is that, mijo? ¿Dónde estás? <laughs> she don't know it was in the United <laughs> States. You know, she still like she was like, Where where, where is that? Like she thought it was a little town over there. You know. Wow, but but Marlon, I mean, two hundred bucks that you sent your parents. I mean, I'm sure that that's that's probably, you know, I don't know, I don't know how much money it would take to earn that in, in Nicaragua, you know. Uh, to to earn two hundred dollars over there, it takes you about a couple of months. To earn it, and you have to work hard. You have to work hard. So, on two hundred dollars over there is almost like five hundred five hundred pesos. So if you send two hundred dollars, your whole family can eat like the entire month. You know. 
That's crazy, man. So, so here we are in San Antonio. Mr. Reyes takes you under his wing. You know, uh, yeah. he's kind of showing you the ropes, and, and you're still working. Um, do do you do you ever question? Was there ever a time when you were mopping, when you were doing dishes, or you know, they they you didn't make enough money, or you know, what I mean, after paying the rent in unos viles, you know, or, or some bills. Uh, you know, you only have so much left. Do you ever just question, like, man, is it worth it? Did you ever just say, hey, man, I, I, th this ain't this ain't what I thought it was gonna be. I, I should probably go back home. No, because remember, I came from nothing. So for me, like three, four hundred bucks, it was, it was a big help, you know. So that's the thing. When you come from nothing, and you have a little bit, it's a lot. For me, it was a lot, you know, because I was available to help my family. I was available to, like, you know, my, my brothers and my sister, the younger, they uh, they finished school, you know, with that money. They went to school. They, they're they like, so, uh, it, it was a lot, you know, for me. Yeah, I, um, I miss my family. I still miss my family every day, you know. And, and um, but at the same time, it was it worth it, you know. It worked because it cha it changed my life and, and my family's life too. Yeah, I I I would assume that your family. I mean, did they, if you do you think that maybe you ever had, like you were just saying right now? You think you just had the pressure of like my family's depending on me now. Once you started sending that money, like you know they did they, they did they get used to it? Um, did did you ever? Was that ever any kind of like your motivation? Like, hey, I mean, I, I mean, I know it was, but uh, do, do you think that, that that kind of swayed you to stay before ever thinking about going back? Yeah, like, like, you know, like any family, we have like fight between each other, right? We still have like differences. And uh, I was, for a little bit of time, I was thinking like, I think that a lot of time I was thinking my family just it was just expecting money from me, you know. Mm -hmm. For a little bit, I was thinking like uh, they look at me like an ATM. <laughs> but I had to stop thinking that way because that was one of the reasons that I came here, you know, to help my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. I just had to find the balance right now because. Now it's different. I have my family, right? I have, I have two boys, my wife. I have to pay bills. So it, it changed a little bit, but it's still, at the same time, it's still like, it don't bother me at all. You know? It actually it makes me feel good that I can still help my parents. Martin, I, I, I think uh, people, I'm going to go to some of these comments, man. Uh, the people are really finding you to be a very humble person and, and true to your family. Um, uh, uh, one of these comments that I want to read, and I don't want to let this, this go by, but uh, uh, somebody put, this is deep, bro. Says, you are everything I look for in a human being. I appreciate you for the man you are. Your kids will continue your legacy the world could use millions of people like you surviving in it. So, I mean, Marlon, you came here with the goal, bro. And your goal when you left your little ranchito in Nicaragua was to make, you always knew that you wanted to do something better with yourself. That, not that what your parents did or what your dad did and had you working wasn't humble and wasn't good enough, but you just, you dreamt further than that. You, you, as we like to say, you, you were thinking outside the box. And you found a way, you found the courage, you know, you, you, you found the cajones to do it, bro. You know what I mean? You, you, it takes a lot, dude. It takes a lot to just pick up and leave everything you know. And that's kind of what I want the viewers to understand where we're at. You're leaving everything that you know, the only thing that you know. 17 years old. Think about think about an American 17-year-old right now. 
You couldn't trust them to go to the damn 7 Eleven and bring you back the right cold drink you asked for. But you would have let them cross four borders and come to a country to, to you know, to make their, their, their life better. I mean, it, it's just, it's amazing, bro. It, it's amazing. Um, one of the questions uh, was, as time has passed, how does your experience compare to what you expected? Uh, so, like, did, did you... What, what was America everything that you expected? Mm, yes and no, right? Uh, the way I think is America is one of the most great countries in the world, right? Um, I love my country, but America is to me like you know my second country, my you know and. and the way I think is, this country they give you so much, so much opportunity to to grow, right? To like, um, and here you just have to work for it. That's the way I think, you know. And here you just have to work for it. It's a lot of opportunity in this country, and that's what I love about this country. They like. You just have to get up, go outside and look, and look for it. You know, I, that's the way I see it. Probably a lot of people they see it differently, right? But the way I see it, like in here, like if you have the right mentality, you have the right, you know, vision, you can do whatever you want. You know, but at the same time, I got a lot of disappointed too. You know, uh, sometimes it, it's not easy, but I'm. How do I say? It? I always think, and my wife laughs at me because I say like, well, nobody pay my bill. I have to work for it, right? <laughs> so sometimes I don't, I don't listen what people have to say, you know, about me. You know, because a lot of people judge you, right? Because, you know, you came to the country illegal. But um, I don't pay attention, to be honest, because like I say, like, I don't ask for anything. I don't ask for you know, not being active. And, and, and Marlon, you Hello? still there? Hey. Yeah, you there? Yeah. Uh, not, not to be, uh, not to be, uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to put here? Not to be, like, like, not a bad guy. Right. But when you hear people yeah. say like, you know, oh, they come here and they, they want everything. They want everything free. But but yet you're on this you're on this live with me telling me the complete opposite. But we all know you, we, we, we're being real. Right. There is people yeah. who do come here and they do that. There is people that come here and they go like, hey, I'm here. You know, no, man. Yeah. Right. It's and like, and, and like, do, you, do you understand Americans like uh, you being, uh, you know, when you came here illegally, do you understand that thought process? Like I, I, I want view because I'm sure I have viewers that stand on both sides of immigration, illegal immigration stuff. Do you do you do you understand that thought process of why they feel that way? Of course, 100 percent. Let me tell you what, because if you and you have. If somebody go to your house, right, like a guest, but if he don't respect your house, how do you feel? Huh? That's for for anybody watching, man. If you didn't hear that, I mean, there, there's there's no easier way to put it, right there. You know how do how do you feel if you if you gotta somebody go to your house? You're trying to help that people, right? But they still be like ungrateful. You still want the people in your house? No. So me coming to this country, the way I see it is like, okay, this is not my house. I have to be respectful, right? Yeah. You have to be respectful. You have to be grateful. 
you have to be like, yeah, like when you go to somebody's a house and they, they they help you, you try and you try and do your best to like, you know, be grateful, right? And respect because in your house is your rule, right? I have to follow your rule in your house. Why are I gonna act like if I'm in my own house? If it's not, right? But then you'll, you'll have so the people the say, though, even though you came in the door without knocking, you came in without yeah. knocking, but now that you're here, you're going to respect the rules, right? I mean, I'm going to respect, that, and I'm going to, you know, and I have to be grateful because thanks to this country, I'm available to help my family. You know, I got my family, you know, my, my, my boys, my wife, they're from here from San Antonio, right? Yeah. So, I, I, for me, it's... And Marlon, I mean, dude, the simple way you put things, some, sometimes I think in the world that we live in, the, in the United States that we live in now, I wish more people could, could have your thought process, man. Because your thought process is so simple, but yet so simple, it is so powerful. The little analogies that you just use are just, are just so so powerful man and um you know people stand on both sides and and, I, and I'm, I'm okay with that you know uh, uh, me doing this been doing this show for for a little bit like i like to poke at people um i like to get yeah. both sides you know i might have my my thoughts and my where i stand i'm that's that's my thoughts but i'm not i'm not dumb i'm not stupid i'm not gonna not understand what where other people are coming from about you know uh, uh, being illegal and, and break like 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 it's like I said in the beginning of the show like we get that man. Uh, somebody yeah. told me um, it's it's been a while back. Like when I asked, I said, uh, "What do you?" Oh, it was Mr. Reese. If y'all saw my interview with Mr. Reese, powerful man, and I remember him telling me that you know if you lived in Matamoros and you worked all month and you have four kids. You have a place to live. You're, you're trying to make it. You're, you're working in Matamoros and you're making $50 a month, American dollars. That's enough to yeah. pay your rent. But your kids are hungry all the time. All the time they're hungry. You, 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 you get home from a work and you try to go do this, try to do that, try to make more money here, hustle here, hustle there. To just to feed your children just the, nu the nutrition that they need to live. And to think that 15, 20 minutes away is a whole nother way of life. It's another country, bro. It's, it's, it's another war, it, you know? It, it is, bro. And, and, and what I'm trying to get is like, as a huge, take, take the border out. Take the Rio Grande out. Take the border. Take all the frontera. Take, take it all out. It's gone. If you were to get up and get your ass up, and get 15 or 20 minutes up north and make more money for your family as a human being, male or female, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. If I have kids to feed, I, I, know, I, I don't care what it takes. I know what I'm going to do to make sure that my kids eat. That's the way I look at it. That's the way yeah. I look at it. I mean, you, we, we, can, we can say what we want. We can stand where we want, and that that that's cool. Like, you know, um, I, I I didn't, I, and I told Marla we wouldn't get political, and we're not. I'm not going to get political, but I just w really want to paint a good picture of of what what their what your guys' thought process is. You know what I mean? Um, you said some things, Marla, tonight that like uh, it really makes me. What I said, we take this country for granted, bro. Regardless of where yeah. we stand politically, regardless of where our country is today, we take this country so, like, we do not know what we have here. And until you've been in another third world country, visited, visiting a third world country and being there for a little while, that ain't the same shit as living in a third world country day in, no. day out. And, and living there and having money is still not the same as living there and having no money. Two, two different things. It, it, it's it's in a sense a fight for survival. Um, yeah. I I Marlon, I, I, we're getting to 
kind of where I want to get with you, where you know, uh, you're here in San Antonio, man, and and you're you're mopping the mall, so that way when we walk through uh, on morning at nine o'clock when the doors open and when, and and those the old people walk in there with their big sketcher uh, shoes so they can walk early in the mall, you know, the ones that walk, they walk over everything that you mopped that the night before. Um, where in life did you just say, I want to do something for myself? What, what led you, uh, cause we haven't even got to you getting married and having a family yet. Like that, that's people, people that don't know Gigi or Crystal and haven't heard her story. They're about to get their minds blown here in a minute. I'll, I'll promise you that. Uh, but so, so now you're 18, 19. You can't even buy a beer, bro. You couldn't even buy cigarettes, bro. <laughs> I don't, I don't smoke, bro. Like, uh, well, no, I'm just saying. I'm saying by your age, like you, you, you couldn't even do this. So, uh, you get your first car, right? Your little Chrysler. Um, how was that? Did, did, you, did you get a driver's license? How, how does that work? Can you, could you could you go and get a driver's license, or somebody has to get you the car, and you just hope that you don't get pulled over? Yeah, no, uh, it was hard for me to get a driver's license, so I can't. So it was, uh, you just drive, you know, like, you have to be careful driving and not get pulled over. Uh, so I bought my one, the guy Juan Reyes, um, he helped me to buy that little car. So I learned, I learned with him how to paint, and I like it. And I was like, oh, I can do this, I like it, you know. So he teach me how to paint. And then, uh, when I started um, working with him, I was making a little more money. So I told one of my my roommates that he was from Nicaragua too. I was like, hey, uh, what about if we get an apartment, just me and you? You know, because I don't like to live like this. I was like, I want to, you know, because those, you know, my friends, they're the one that they used to drink every night. And they used to like, and I was, you know, my mentality would just work, you know. So we decided to get an apartment with my friend, just us. Um, and then he he was working for a company that used to do like a apartment complex, painting apartment complex. So one day he's like, hey, they're looking for work. They're looking for workers. So you want to work? I'm like, how much are they going to pay? You know, because I don't want to leave my job and, and go to another job. So they're like, I remember back then, I think it was like 300 or 350 every week. But the good thing in there, I don't, they don't take you tax. When I was, when I used to work for the North, mm -hmm. when I used to work for the North Mall in the San Francisco State House, even though I was illegal, I used to pay tax and I was still paying tax, you know? So stop right there. Like, stop, yeah, right, stop right there. Stop right there. Cause I, I want I, this is one of my my pet peeves you work two jobs no family they gave him the job those those companies gave him the job and they took taxes I can promise you at the highest rate You know, when you get your check, people, and you look at it and they take taxes and you're just like, God dang it, man, that much taxes, Jesus, right? If you're making good money, it's not that big of a deal. But if that's all the money you're making, it's a big deal. Here's yeah, pet, but here's... let me tell you something, Buffy. When you're yeah. illegal, you have to pay tax, but you can get it back. You know how do you get your income tax back? How? You know, like you can get you, you for you, you get your check, right? Your income tax. But mm -hmm. from, uh, if you're illegal, they don't give you tax. You don't get a tax, a tax. You don't get income tax. But you still have to pay this. But you don't get tax. So you know, you're you're right on my pet peeve, Marlon. <laughs> you pay these taxes to this country. 
You're working your ass off just like any other American. And you're paying your taxes. But at the end of the year, us Americans, the majority of Americans, we file a tax return. Probably yeah. say 60 to 70% of Americans, whether you get $1 or $2 back, you get something back. Some some people work two or three days a year, have six or seven kids, to get back eight thousand, eighty five hundred, nine thousand. I'm not knocking that. I'm, I'm not here to knock that. <laughs> My point is, those taxes are taken out, but they're never. Uh, they don't ever do a, a tax return. So, think and stop and think about that right now. If, if we have millions of undocumented workers working right now in the United States, where is that money? They don't file no tax return. Nobody talks about that. Just my pet peeve. Where's that money? It ain't a little bit. I can promise you that. It ain't a little bit. Um. So... Your, your your buddy your buddy tells you, you know, hey, uh, Marlon, let's do this painting job. But be, be, Marlon, but you got an apartment, bro, and, and and this is a god honest truth. You have no license. You have no social security number. <laughs> How in the hell can two undocumented people get an apartment? Walk me through that. Okay, so a lot of department complex they ask you for your passport, right? You can even you can use a passport for your country, and and if you can just prove that you had a job, they take that. Not all of it, but they take that. But uh, or or they back then they used to used to pay like the deposit and used to give like two months up front, you know, to get apartment. And just to prove prove something that you'll be work you're working for a company or yeah and and that, that gives you your thing hey I want to read a comment before before it flows away from me um, Marlon uh, my buddy Audi said that you are paying taxes for services that you would never ever use can you imagine how many millions are in the, how many millions are in the United States economy. Uh, or how many millions are in the U.S.? America's economy would collapse literally without illegals. I don't care where you stand. That is a true statement. If, if, if illegals were to stop working tomorrow for three days, psh, you, 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 don't, you don't grasp the con the, the concept is huge. They might do this little bit of work, but that little bit of work that they need done makes everything else work. And I, I think that's that's you have to think outside the box. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's some people that I really wish were watching that I see all the time post stuff like I really wish they were they were listening right now. But so so you get an apartment, man, with with your with your with your passport. Um, yeah. And so you, your buddy says so so. What year are we talking now, Marlon? Like, what are we talking about? How much money are we are we making an hour? Uh, uh, what what year are we talking? That was probably like three or four years after, probably two thousand four, two thousand five, and I was making like yeah, I still make it like you know three four hundred bucks, and uh, but we used to save and. You know, back then it was cheaper. The, the rent it was like six, seven hundred bucks. I'm not sure remember those days <laughs> wow. when it was cheaper. So, so put a ramen noodle soups, pay the electric and the rent. And yeah, that's that's it. Enough for lunch. You tomato with egg and tortillas. After. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So Marlon, uh, you started painting, dude, and and that became. Something that you loved, or what? What? what how did that go? Yeah, uh, nah, nah, I, I like it. When I started painting, I was like, "Oh, I can do this." Like I say, I, I, my buddy Juan Reyes, he's the one teach me how to do it. 
so I was like, but when I started working with my friend at uh, uh, those apartment complex, I was like, oh, I can, and I started seeing it, and I always like to watch everything. I like to see how do they do it, and, you know, like, I, I always like, I like, I'm very like, you know, like to watch. And I learned how to do it, and uh, we used to go, and that com- and then, uh, you know, with that company, we used to go to Dallas, Houston, Chicago, we went to Chicago to work, you know. With that company? And uh, with that company, yeah. So, and uh, I, I was making more money when we used to go out of town. I used to make more money because, you know, they pay you extra. But when I came back, uh, I remember last time I worked for that company, we went to Chicago and it was freezing. So I was like, uh uh-uh. uh, we like, uh uh-uh, uh, this is not for us, man. I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, we're from San Antonio. A kid from Nicaragua <laughs> up in the windy city, freezing, uh, freezing, freezing cold. Wow, man! Yeah. And, and Martin, how would you get around? Would they fly y'all, or, or that was always by car? Yeah, we used to drive. Yeah, we used to drive over there. So when I came back from Chicago, um, I started looking for a different job. I still painting, so I started working for a company. They used to do like custom homes. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, I like this, you know, I can do this. So I, I started working for that company, you know, like uh, painting houses and like by stone oak. Back then it was just, it was not those big old houses, like, you know, it was all the way to 1604. It was not much, you know, like by Fiesta, Texas, all those houses are like brand new. So I started working in that company and, uh, and then I, I got like, uh, I was running everything for, for my, my boss. Cause, uh, you know, I was still taking English class, you know, so I, and I learned how to like do like the estimate emails. Uh, so and then my boss, it was just using me, you know, like I was running everything for him. I would go and do the, the estimate, running all the neighborhoods and, so that's how I learned how to paint. So, so Martin, you, 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 you start painting, bro. You start making this money and, and it, it, the American dream, even though you're here, is starting to become a reality in a sense. I, I would think for a young, young man like yourself driving around in, in a nice little Chrysler, um, you know, uh, getting bigger jobs. And, and now you're starting to do something uh, that you like doing. Uh, where did where did family start? How, how old were you? So it was funny, man. Like when I get back from um, from Chicago, uh, my manager at the apartment that I used to live. It was uh, she was my friend. And it was, uh, you know, Ipana, right? A Gigi's sister. Yeah, yeah, Gigi's sister. So she always say like, oh, I want you to meet my sister. You know, I want you to meet my sister. So for like, for years, she trying to, you know, Put get me up. and Gigi like, yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm tired. I was working all the time. So we, it was a, it was a little play that we used to go dance over there by, uh, by your church. Oh, uh, off of Babcock and St. Cloud? Yeah, <laughs> right there. It was a little Spanish club that we used to go dance. And uh, one night, I was walking, right? I was walking to the door, and I saw, man, that girl walking out for, to the front door with the long hair, black hair, and I was like, as I, and I say, you know, uh, hola, preciosa. And she's like, hi. So uh, and she went outside, and I went inside the club. And uh, when I went inside, I was looking for her, and we started dancing. And we found out we don't know that I went. I don't know that when she was a son sister that she was trying to pick me up. <laughs> so, Coincidence, when, bro. Uh, when Isana saw like you know that we were dancing, she was like, "That's my sister. That's my sister." Dude, so that's that, how we met. 
that's how we met and then uh, we start talking and uh we we uh used to live over there by waterwood elmendor mm-hmm. the monte so i used to uh, yeah in the rancho <laughs> <laughs> so, I used to drive every day after work to go see her. And where were you living? Where yeah. was the apartment at? San Pedro. Woo! Airport. Man, Gigi. Man, you talk about love right there. That, that's that's yeah. that's a grip of a drive, man. So, so Marlon, <laughs> you, you and Gigi met, and and now, I mean, um, this whole time that you're that you're still working, Marlon. The, the original goal has, has always been, you know, the American dream, but you still never forgot your parents and you were still supporting them this whole time, right? Yeah, all the time. That was, even when uh, when I met Gigi and we, when we know that we're serious when we got married, I told her that like, hey, you know, like, uh, one of the reasons I'm here was because I want to help my parents, so want to put it in there you know like was- yeah yeah no 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 um so you know we're, we're we're getting to the to the family part and i told you guys man you you have you have no idea what you're in store for because you've been hearing all these things from from marlon and, and you know the comments are are amazing uh i wanted to read a comment uh this is from my, my buddy marlon uh from my buddy from my buddy audi marlon he says no offense to marlon on the use of the word illegal, much respect to him. I don't see him as an illegal, I see him as another human being. And if everybody could think like you, Audi, this place would be a whole better place to live in. I promise you, man. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to say these last, not last, because there's no time limit, but, uh, Marlon eventually marries his preciosa. What'd you say? Your hermosa preciosa. What'd you call her? <laughs> yeah, he marries <laughs> his hermosa preciosa, and um, you you get married, and you have no idea what you're about to get yourself into. Not in a bad way, Gigi. Like <laughs> you, 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 you know. The American dream is there. It's, you, I mean, you're scratching at it. I mean, the doors, the doors open already, man. You, I mean, you're 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 pretty much walking through it. Um, you get married to a girl here from San Antonio. Strike one. No, but that's the case. No. <laughs> uh, you know. So, um, I. You, you get married and. Uh, I didn't know this, dude. I didn't know this for a while. Uh, but you adopted your first son. Is that right? Yes, AJ. Yes, sir. That was a... It was a blessing, man. I was, uh, you know, AJ went through a lot when he was little. And uh, we decided to... To... to adopted but I don't see him like adopted I see him like my own you know because even a lot of times I don't like to explain to the people you know because to me he's my son right to me he's my son and like let me tell you a little really quick um, he started working you know that right uh, yeah yeah first job. Uh-huh. and man he was so excited and uh, so we we went to uh Start working at Taco Cabana, and uh, the manager in there, she was like, she was telling Gigi like, his son, he's so like, you know, he behaves, he's so like uh, humble, like he did a good job, and that made me feel proud, you know, because that's my deal, right? That's my goal to like, you know, teach my son, both of my sons, they're like. You know, to how to, to be humble, how to, to uh, see everyone the same, you know, like they not like differences. And AJ, man, he's, he's such a good kid, man. I'm very proud of him. Yeah, I, it, my wife just, a text I just saw in the corner of my eye, um, you know, 
I would have never known Mark uh, through Marlon. I would have never known that AJ was adopted until, dude. I it's recently, bro. Like I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I would say within the last three or four months, I didn't know that, dude. I honestly did yeah. not know that. But to hear you say that your son working and what it means to you that he's carrying your same work ethic because that's what it, that's what it sums up to be. What you and you and Gigi have installed into him, y'all's work ethic, the way you brought him up, that says a lot about a parent. That's what you want as a parent. That's your goal. That's your goal, man. Um, so it doesn't stop there, you know. Here you are, in a you're stepping through the the door frame of the American dream, and you do something that. 99.9% of people in America would never do you 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 just you 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 adopt you know and and I love the fact that I didn't know that he was adopted cuz that says if that tells you anything I'm a good judge of people I mean you I would have never known I would have never known um so you have AJ and the, and then then you have I that, that you have that you have old Matthew boy, uh, spinning yeah. image of his mom, but body just like his dad. If, if that makes any sense, <laughs> he looks just like his mom, but he's built just like his dad. It, 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 he's funny, man. I, I I love having him around here, um, Marlon. And so you you you're still painting. When did you decide? Because we haven't even told the people. When did you decide, like, hey, man, I'm not working for nobody no more. Nobody's taking money out of my pocket no more. And, I, and not, again, if, if that person is watching, not that that's bad, but when did you just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do something for myself and for my family. Yeah. No, when um, this, I, when I was like that, I was running for everything for him, and I was, you know, working hard and everything, and I was like, like I said, I always had in my mind, I always had that vision that, like, uh, I can do this, you know, like, always had that, like, I want to do better all the time. I, even whatever I do, and I try and do my best, you know, even if it's cleaning, I try and do the best, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember when I, I had the idea, but by, by this time I was already married to Crystal. And I went to home, and I was like, hey, I want to quit my job. And she's like, what? You're crazy. You're making good money in there. you like, <laughs> you know, because, yeah, I was making good money. But I was like, no, I, I know I can do it. And she got a little bit of fear. But I was like, no, I, 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 I cannot do it. So I start, um, when I start my business, it was just me and my brother, Manuel. You met him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. El, el, el pelo chinito, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. So, but by that time, my brother was already here in San Antonio with me. So, we, I was like, screw this, I'm going to start my own business. So, I talked to my boss and I was like, hey, I want to start my own business. If I don't make it, I'm going to come back to you. You know, he was like, no, no, that's too loud. <laughs> let, me, let me know if you need help. He was cool, man. He was very cool. Uh, let me know if you need help or anything. So, but I started working. I started doing little stuff. I started doing, you know, like uh, little houses, the fans. Uh, I started doing like a couple of rooms here and there. And man, like after two years, I started going bigger, 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 bigger. And I started getting like big houses and big contracts, you know, like. So that's when I, I told Crystal, like, I trying to, like, uh, get more people. So I started getting more people, and I get, like, a two contractors. And it, it, it's, it's amazing, man, you know, like, how it went to just me and my brother for, to, you know, having more guys working for me, help me. And it's a blessing, bro. We, we had, like, up and down, you know, like, we had, like, our time. I always, but I always be blessed. Like, that's one thing I have to be grateful every day. God bless me every day. You know, yeah. uh, Marlon, uh, 
I, I've heard you and your story from probably the first sentence, bro. The word prayer, the word God, um, your faith, your faith really drove your your passion to gain the American dream. Um, it's just like the the, the lady who, who Miss Yojas who commented earlier about how the cross was was part of your every one of you, every step you took was towards the cross, man. Um, I I usually don't do like the whole religion thing, but you know I'm 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 very you know. I, I say it all the time. I, I love being Catholic. Um, me and my wife and, and my family. Um, and you really embodied your, your 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 faith. Like it's so strong in everything that you do, man. You and your wife have God in the center of your life, and it shows every single day. Um, and I think I think as America, that's what we're missing, bro. That's what we're missing as Americans. Um, you know, it, it, it gets taken out of a lot of things and, you know, I just, I, I really, I really wish it, it wasn't. Um, but Marlon, dude, you literally came as a Mocoso 17 year old from Nicaragua. You crossed four borders. You... You swam in freezing cold river. You got crammed in a little Toyota Corolla <laughs> and, and prayed to God that you'd make it here to San Antonio. You you mop a mall that we visit to tw once every two weeks. You know that I visit personally. Um, you wash dishes. And the whole time, man, your whole story, bro, you never asked shit from nobody. No. That's, that, that, that's your, that, that's, to me, that's what just is so strong about your story, bro. You never asked nobody for nothing. Everything that you yeah. have to this day, you earned it. You earned it. And, and I want the American people to know that this is what this is what people do, man. This is what the people do to survive. This is what people do to 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 support their families. They're not coming here to take your jobs, man. They're not coming here to 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 take advantage of the system. Do people do it? Yes. Our own people take advantage of the system. Um Marlon, you, you and you and uh, Gigi's. Uh, I heard your story the other night you know, about your marriage and stuff. I mean, it's a typical American marriage, bro. It's got its ups and downs. It's got its valleys. It's got its mountains. And at the end of the day, you and you and her have found a way to to stay together, and and and, and you know keep your marriage strong, dude. I I really I really. Uh, I really look up to you and, and Gigi in, in, as far as your, your marriage and how you keep God in the center of your life, bro. It's just, it says so it's much not, about us. We know we're not perfect. We still we still far away to be perfect, but uh, we decided to fight for each other. You know. Yeah. And uh, we we put God in the middle. Everything, you know, is because of God. So, and uh, that's the thing, and uh, like I say, we're not perfect, man. I, we make a lot of mistakes, you know. Yeah. We make a lot of mistakes, but we're trying to, to survive. And uh, my business is still, it's still, I consider it still a small business. Shit. But I, I, compete, I, I, compete, I compete with big companies. And, like, and I want to say this to a lot of people, too, that like, they think that like, my business, we pay taxes. We, uh, you know, we do everything legal, right? You know, we don't uh, take. It's supposed to be do, you know, mm -hmm. like because a lot of people think that like 
oh, you know, but you take advantage of anything. No, we like, I pay time. You know, my business is legit. So, because a lot of companies, they think, oh, you know, they complain because they're small business. Right. They're taking the job. No, no I try to do my best to, like, you know, I consider myself, like, I compete with other companies and, like, I do the same job or even better sometimes, you know. So th those of you that, that are just watching just uh, me and Marlon's beautiful faces, uh, handsome faces on, on your thing and you're not seeing comments, scroll across the bottom. Um, tonight, hey, man, I didn't need a sponsor tonight. My sponsor is, is my, he, he's my, my, my guest tonight. Um, if you're in San Antonio, Austin, New Braunfels, um, Ilotes, uh Dude, anywhere in the surrounding area, I mean, within a good, you know, Martin, what would what, be the furthest? Maybe like 100 miles tops? Uh, we've been all the way to uh, uh, Fort Worth. Like oh, okay, well, well, 100 miles doesn't seem. So um, tonight is is uh, no commercial, no, no banner. It's Martin's painting, man. Martin's painting. <laughs> uh, it, it, you can he can be reached at two one zero three one nine nine six nine two. Again, that's two one zero three one nine nine six nine two. Martin's painting, man. If you're any of my viewers in the area, I don't care. Whatever you need done, you need the out. You've been thinking about doing the outside of your house, um, painting a couple of rooms, uh, whatever it is. I'm telling you right now with my own eyes. Marlon has come to my rescue more than once. Um, <laughs> he showed me like little tricks that I was just like, dude, I would have sat there an hour what it took him two minutes to do what it took me one hour. Um, Marlon, be, be, before I forget, I, I'll never forget when you were like, hey, just, 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 just move, just move. And, and well, I said, Marlon, I got I to gotta tape this corner because we were going to paint two different colors in the room. And the corners were gonna yeah. touch. So Marlon, I told Marlon, I was like, Marlon, I gotta tape it, man, but it's got texture on it. It's probably gonna bleed through the tape or whatever. Nah, 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 nah. Get, get, just, just, just move out of the way. And this man grabs a brush. He grabs his brush and he looks at me, he goes, Let me show you. He grabbed it and he literally painted from the ceiling to the floor a perfect <laughs> line. No bleed whatsoever. I mean, you, you could have put 30 pieces of tape and you couldn't have got as good as he got free-handed. So uh, he, the dude really has a, he has a, a steady hand. Um, you know, uh, again, people are asking for your, for your, uh, for your number. I'm going to say it again. It's 210-319-9692. And he's a very, very busy man. So just, just know that, okay? If you, if you're calling because you need some, <laughs> you need your back porch painted tomorrow, it's, it's probably not going to happen tomorrow. He's, he's very, very busy. Uh, I want to go to some comments, Marlon, before we start wrapping her up. But um, he's done more than many American. Um, this is from my tia, who's a, who's a, a, she's not a small business owner. She's a big time business owner. She'll she'll say otherwise. So, hey, happy belated birthday to you, Tia Robin. Thank you for always tuning in. Um, she's like, he's done, he's done more than American-born people do in a lifetime. He has a passion for a better life. He's done it. Hats off to you and your family and your business uh, for health and prosperity always. From another uh, prosper, uh, from another business owner. You did my wife's office dude at her work. And she's the envy of everybody at work. Like, people came in like, yo! And, and my wife's laughed because she's like, babe, Marlon was in my office. I don't think he was in there not even an hour and a half. And he was done with everything. <laughs> so everybody was... Everybody was, was freaking out, dude. And in her office, it is, it, is the, uh, it is the best painted office there. Um, I, I'm going to... Marlon, dude, I, I'm so glad that you told me yes. Honestly, man, if people watch this later um, on tonight, tomorrow, 
those of you that are watching, share the video, man. Um, share my share my stuff on Facebook. It's, it's not to make no money, man. All this is is just to get another view of things. You just got you just got a real life story of a man who came literally from nothing and crossed all these borders to live the American dream. Something that us Americans can't even do living here, given, given everything. And yet Marlon just continues to do it, you know, everything on his own and, and, and never asking, you know, nothing in return. Uh, Marlon, you are a special man, bro. dictionary y, y miras que es un padre va a tener tu retrato ahí porque neta bro you have done uh, so much for yourself for your family and you're living the American dream right now bro right now you are you are you are doing uh everything that you set out to do at 17 years old when you left Nicaragua and and yeah. and keep being you bro keep keep um those of y'all that remember my buddy Frank if y'all don't remember maybe eight, nine, ten episodes back I had my buddy Frank who did some prison time and uh we talked about him you know doing prison time and getting back into reality, uh, getting back into the real world and how the real world don't accept felons and how hard it is to, to get on your feet and to help. You heard him mention a guy's name over and over again. Like he said, me he just kept thanking me and thanking me. That other guy was Marlon. Marlon was the guy. You know? Yeah, thank you, boy. Yeah. And, and uh, I... Dude, I mean, when we sit down and talk and we, we we drink a beer or whatever and we just shoot the shit, bro, I love to hear your stories, dude. You know, people always say, me, oh, bro, I love to hear your stories, man. I, I, sometimes I I shut up, believe it or not, and I like to hear <laughs> modern stories, bro, because they're so realistic, dude. They're so real, and I, I wish more people could hear your story, dude. I think, I, I think if people uh, would have sat down and watched these two hours and, and hear your, your story from... Uh, I'm not gonna say rags to riches because in your eyes, you know, you 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 were rich the whole way, every step of the every step of the way, you were rich. Um, but people could learn a lot from somebody like you, Marlon. And I think what you and Gigi are doing, um, bringing people closer to the Lord, uh, helping people along the way. That's kind of what my what my Wacky Wednesday. Motto is all the time is, hey, reach your hand out and help somebody off the ground. Dust them off and let them know. Whisper in the ear and let them know. Hey, it's not how many times you fall. It's how many times you get up. Because in yeah. life, we're going to fall. We're all going to fall, man. Um, I, I, uh, you, you never know when you're going to be up, when you're going to be down. Because, like I said, for me, I came from zero, you know? So... I feel like for me is a uh, it's hard to see somebody else down and not stop it happen, you know, because I've been there. So for me is like my dad used to say this all the time: a real man don't let other men die, you know. So in español is un hombre no deja morir a otro hombre, you know. So that's one thing always, like, to me, like, it's down on my mind, like, if I see somebody that needs help, you know, like, it's something that I can do. We we try our best to help. And then, because, like I say, like, I told my wife, like, we are blessed. We feel blessed. You know, 
we are, we, we uh, you know, God bless us every day. Every day. I, you know. I, I, be, before I, before I let you hang up, um, there's two things I want to talk about real quick. Um, one, I'm going to put you on the spot, Martin, and it's going to make you real uncomfortable. I know it is because I know who you are. <laughs> if there was anything that you could say, not that you, because you've said, a, you've said so many, so many good analogies tonight. If there was something you could say to, to a, an American who just despise, not despises, because I don't want to, who, to an American who just says, no, that's it. We need a wall. Nobody should cross. Take the seven years it takes to get your, your work visa or however long it takes. There's a white way of doing things. In a nice way, you've gone, going through what you've gone through to be where you're at today. What would you say to them? Oh, it's hard, man. Because... <laughs> Like I say, I understand a little bit because this is their country, you know? Like, I'm here, like, illegal, right? So, um, that's, that was my mistake, but I'm not feel bad because I did it for my family. One thing I say is just probably be a little more open-minded. Uh, like, yes, there's a lot about people, but it's a good people too, you know? people like me like I know a lot of my friends they just want to come here to to provide for their family to to uh, do better yeah you know a lot of people they just here for like like I said like me I just I don't expect anything hanging out you know I don't want you to give me something I just want to work you know I don't I don't remember anything that I don't ask anything to the government. I don't ask for food stamp. I don't ask for any benefit. You know, so just, yeah, they can put a wall, but like, to be honest, that wall is not going to work. <coughs> you know, no. probably if they be more, more uh, open minded, they're like, yeah, it's not bad people, but they're good people too. They're trying to survive. You know, that's probably the best way I can put it. But so, with that being said, you know, uh, you're a business owner already, and it's one business. But you're Marlin, bro, from Nicaragua. One business, is, <laughs> one business wasn't enough for you, bro. It wasn't enough for you. Um, I, you, you, you did something, uh, and 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 hearing Gigi's story and and talking about her stuff the other night. That, you went to her and said, hey, man, you know what? You did something for her. You're like, hey, man, let's, I'm going to get a business going for you. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think, I think that, that um, what you did for Gigi uh, says a lot about who you are, too, man. Me, me and Maria were talking about that on the way to Dallas uh, as we were listening to Gigi's show. Uh, you know, you're opening up a, a nutrition shop, man. And uh, yeah, um, a million congratulations. Wanna... <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, uh, that's something that like it was my wife's dream to have a shop, her own shop. You know, like because you know me, I was gonna say like I like to be my own boss. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and. She's always like, so when I saw the opportunity, man, I was like, the first thing I was like, oh, my wife, I knew she can make that business, like, you know, rock and roll, but, uh, <laughs> so, that was, 
yeah, I, I believe in her, you know, and I want to see my wife successful, you know. That's one thing now, like, I want her to feel it, like, man, I did it, you know. It's so, like, it's a big satisfaction that when you feel like, man, I did something. I did something for myself. I did it with my own hands, you know. So it feel like, it's like when you're working all day, and you go to the sun, you buy a beer, right? You're like, Ooh, I deserve it. I work hard, you know? Mm. I earn it, you know? Like, you work hard, so it's like, you don't feel bad, right? Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, yeah. So so you and Gigi are going to open up a shop here, uh, a nutrition shop uh, with with, uh, with some friends, right? You, you, you're, you're partnering up with somebody else? Yes, we partnered with uh, Vanessa and Nick. Herrera, and uh, that cool guy, man. Uh, we we excited for that journey. So. I I I heard that the thing and all the stuff that Gigi's and and Vanessa are gonna be going on there. That's cool, man. It's gonna be something different, bro. Um, Marlon, uh, before I say my goodbye to my viewers, I always say goodbye to my 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 uh, co-host, my guest, uh, Neta, bro. You, you're you're always gonna be my brother, dude. Um, sometimes uh, Frank said it earlier. You know, people just fall in your laps sometimes. And I think sometimes, as 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 busy we are in the world, in the world that we live in today, we have to sometimes take that in consideration. Like sometimes the Lord puts people in your life, and at the time you might not realize what it's why or or what. Or who or but when it happens, you meet people like you, bro. Like you're my brother, bro. Like I mean, you're my carnal, bro. I mean, we barbecue together, we drink beer together, we go dancing out, we we take our wives out dancing together. I mean, this is not a this is not like a hey, you know oh, I see him once a year. No, we 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 see each other quite often. I mean, any 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 birthday parties, anything like that. We're, we're always together. Um, and I want, before I let you get off, I want to tell you that people, uh, people cry tonight, bro. I promise you, they might not tell you on here. They might not, what do you call it? But people, you really, I think you really touch a lot of people with your story. And I want to tell you that don't ever stop living the American dream, bro. Because people, the world needs more people like you in it. The world needs more people like you in it. And and you keep striving, bro. Don't ever let anybody tell you any different. Because to me, you're an American. Yeah, eres de Nicaragua, pero eres americano. And, puro sananto. Puro sananto, that's right, baby. And and just uh, keep being you, Marlon, dude. Keep, keep striving to be the best at, at what you do at your business and let it grow, man. If it gets bigger, let it go, dude. Let it get bigger, bro. Don't don't hold yourself down to just staying small because it's easier to maintain. Let it grow, dog. Let it grow. I promise you, man, the way you, you and Gigi live your life with the Lord, bro, he is going to bless you a million times full, dog. And and I want to thank you for being my brother. I want to thank you for for. You sharing your story with would probably be thousands of people by tomorrow uh, because people need to hear stories like yours. Tired of hearing the same yeah, stuff I, over and over again. Yeah, I want to share something before we go. You know, I don't, you know, I remember I told you like first thing it was like, I don't like uh, political. But I want to share something with you about like, you know, because if, um, how do I say? If you like Trump or, you know, like you are a Republican or Democrat, it doesn't mean you're about people. Because let me tell you something. I got people, you know, that follow Trump or that, but they like my brother. You know, they treat me like a brother. And uh, so a lot of times we get the idea only because you follow this person, you know, you're about people or you think different. I think that if we respect each other, you know, no matter what you think, right? If I respect you, what you think, and you respect the way I think, it's okay if we have different 
uh, we have differences, right? But that doesn't mean only because you are Democrat or you are Republican. It doesn't mean you are like, oh, it's about people, you know. Uh, one thing I learned that this year, especially because everything we're going right now, you know, a lot of people complain, a lot of stuff going on, and I, I know that. But we have to stop thinking, oh, because you follow this, you know, this guy or this other guy, you're about people. You know, I don't think that that's true, you know? Because, like I say, like, I got friends on both sides, and, like, for me, they're like my brother. They treat me like a brother. They treat me like they don't see me different, you know? And that's one thing I, I see now that, like, a lot of people, they kind of, like, think, oh, if you follow this guy or you follow the other guy, you will. So I want to share that with you that, like, no matter what side you are, you know, I think if we respect each other, you know, to me, respect is a big deal, right? I respect the way you think. So as long as you respect the way I think too, I think we can be, you know. I respect friend, those words brother. coming from you, man. Yeah, because I, it's because I see that a lot outside, you know, when I'm working and a lot of people, they ask me what, what I think. You know, and I'm like, to me, it's like, you know, you, you can think or you can believe what you want to believe. I respect that as you like, right? As long yeah. as you don't, you know, like, you have to respect the way I think too, and uh, we can still be best friends, <laughs> you know? No, man, you, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, Martin. You're absolutely, again, if more people had your thought process, bro, we'd be living in a way better. Uh, situation than than we are, and, I, and we'll get there, man. We'll get there either way, one way or the other. We're gonna get there. Yeah. Put God first, and everything will work out. Oh, Again, oh. Martin, go ahead. No, no, I said okay. always put God first. Yeah. Again, Marlon, gracias, man. Mil gracias. Uh, thank you, bro, from the bottom of my heart for for being you. Thank you for coming on here. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, it means a lot to me, and and I'm sure a lot of people got a lot out of it tonight. I'm 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 positive. Um, a lot of people got I hope. A, a different a different uh, way of looking at things. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Ahorita te echo una llamadita when we get done. But uh, I love you, Carnal, and uh, and and keep Thank you. Man. Good. Thank you. And God bless you on your new journeys, bro. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, so, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show, man. I really did. Uh, I, I know you saw me get emotional. Um, I, I'm not a, I'm not a very, uh, I am, I am an emotional person. My kids say, dang dad, we learn more from you on Wacky Wednesday than we do talking to you when I do talk. Um, but, uh, just wanted to give you guys an idea of, of the American dream in a different, in a different sense. American dream for us is, you know, getting married, uh, to the love of your life and, you know, getting a decent job and having a nice home and a nice car, uh, all materialistic things, right? Materialistic things in our eyes. And not that that's bad. I'm uh, it's the same. I mean, it's the American dream, but to see an American dream from, from a young 17 year old Nicaraguan from from nothing to, to cross and to become who he is uh, dude, what a story man what a story so again if you guys enjoyed tonight's show man please um, if, you, if you get some time if you haven't uh, I know my faithful have uh, my, my YouTube viewers of my YouTube uh, subscribers have gone up but share my YouTube channel, man. Please go on there, look up Bumper Gomez, uh, share it on whatever you got, and just say, hey, man, you know what? If you want to, you got two hours on Wednesday to hang out and hear something different than what you hear on the news, listen to this guy. You might, you might dig something. Um, I'd really, I really appreciate that. Uh, if you guys could do that for me, it would, it would really help out. Again, I need to get to a thousand. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, we can really take this and, and make it bigger than what it is. Um, but thank y'all for tuning in, man. I love every single one of y'all. Keep tuning in. 
Bumpers wacky Wednesday. Sometimes uh, some Wednesdays are a little wackier than others. Sometimes they're serious. Tonight was serious. Uh, and I, I hope you got something from it. Um, so keep being you, man. Keep doing you. Uh, pick somebody off the ground. Dust them off. And keep working on, on doing something. Remember I told you all last week I gave you all... I gave you a little incentive just to to uh, to uh, go out and help somebody. You know, don't film it. This it's not for for it's just help somebody out. Do something nice for somebody. Uh, you know, I I really I really just again I want to touch on different subjects, man. If you guys have subjects that you want me to talk about, message me, man. Hit me up on Facebook. If you got my cell phone number, send me a text. Call me, whatever. I don't care what it is, dude. You might think it's like, nah, he won't. Dude, you never know. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys right now, man. In the next two weeks, there's, in the next two weeks, man, I'm, I'm going to have a show that's going to be, it's going to be something, dude. It's going to be something that I think mainstream media needs to be doing. Right? And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, more to come, more to follow. Uh, it's it, oh, it's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. So, um, good night. Thank you all for tuning in. And I'll see you all next Wednesday, about 7.30-ish, you know, 7.31, 7.32, just depending. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. It means so much that you guys watch. Those of you all that watch the whole show, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Good night.